reasons for individuals and whole groups of people to leave the country of their birth and their origin. The African-American community has, at times, left America in response to racism. There has been a movement to embrace Africa as a motherland, as the homeland. I felt the desire and need to return to the African continent. And uh, for the last 30 some odd years, Tanzania has been home. My father was Jackie Robinson, the African-American who broke the color barrier in, in professional baseball. Robinson dashes for the plate. An umpire Summers calls him safe, but Yogi Berra doesn't think so. There were three children. I was the youngest. I came along after he had retired from Major League Baseball. I was very fortunate to have Jack and Rachel Robinson as parents. We wanted our children to live fully, to be active, to be committed, to be courageous. Life is not important except in its um, interest in other people, justice for other people. I've never seen my father dressed as a baseball player. The fact that he became famous by desegregating Major League Baseball is only one portion of his life. His legacy is really to social change. When the Civil Rights Movement came along, Jack was out there doing all kinds of things, but our family was also very much involved. Our dinner table was like a forum for us to talk about what was happening in the country. It was such a dynamic period. And so our first family assignment was the March on Washington. It was great to be with my father, who was part of the leadership. Marching for human rights, for equality, for justice, was an affecting experience of my youth. In uh, 1967, I took David to Africa. It was a very illuminating kind of experience for him and his feeling about race. And I think he looked to Africa as his homeland and as a source of, uh, of substance for him. You want to kind of understand where your people come from. And David had that initial experience when he was 14. I spent a year at Stanford University. I felt I became a global student. He was sort of in college. He was more into protest than he was <laughs> going to class. His dream was to be a citizen of Africa. He decided he would drop out of Stanford and he literally hitchhiked from Egypt um, to Tanzania. I came to the African continent to be involved in continuing the mission of my father and that generation. This is the beginning of the road from the farm to your morning cup of coffee. <laughs> Tanzania produces close to 100 million pounds of coffee annually. But part of the reason that coffee has not been developmental is that Farmers have been limited to labor only. We have not been part of the business of coffee. When my brother discovered the whole route to coffee, it wasn't just about his farm. It was branching out and making it um, a larger endeavor and making it possible for really small farmers to have profit. He formed this farm cooperative, and he decided that if he could bring those people together, they would be able to create a, a product and a living wage. We named our family farm Sweet Unity. We are also a second generation in the coffee business. 
When my father retired from Major League Baseball, the first job he had was with Chock Full of Nuts, a coffee company. We have close to 1,000 acres of land under cultivation in coffee. A little more than 40 acres. However, we only have two mules. The cooperative brings the individual farmer to the point where he has a volume of coffee together with his neighbors to be able to negotiate a position in the world market. Going up to David's farm is an adventure in itself, especially when you have to travel with my brother. You can get from New York to the capital of Tanzania, Dar es Salaam, faster than you can get from the capital city of Dar es Salaam to our farm. 14 hour ride on a bus. And then you're another four hours to the farm. One hour on tarmac road, three hours on dirt road. And my mother has been doing this for 30 years. I try to get there almost every year to be able to be a part of his life in Africa. It is a grueling trip, and she has made this trip into her 80s. Okay. Go, go, all the way. Come on, all the way. Come on. Go. It's a bit of a haul. And how about your sister? My sister has been to Tanzania, um, and... Um, My daughter, Sharon, has never been to the farm. I asked David about it. He didn't even want to call you out. Come on, man. You said she didn't want to take that trip off. Well, hey, you going to get me, no, boy. No, now, you no. baby up relationship with your sister, but I ain't messing up my relationship. She always has reasons for why she can't get there. I would like to visit my brother on his farm, and I will try to make that commitment. So maybe my next trip, we'll, we'll plan it ahead, and we'll hire a helicopter. <laughs> Where is he? I myself have 10 children. My wife is from central Tanzania, and so my children are, in fact, a mix of the two tribes of the Wanyamwezi and the African-American. It's fun to be with the grandchildren that I have there. I had to constantly remind them that I didn't speak Swahili. They had to speak English when they were talking to me. When it comes to baseball, I really don't know much about it because they do not play it here, like, at all. No one here plays baseball. You cannot go into a shop and find a bat here. Nothing. I'm going to show how my grandfather used to play baseball. When he's on second base and the batter is about to bat, he'll go like this. As soon as he hits, and Um, I know that my grandfather is the first black American to play baseball in the major leagues. We're very proud that our grandfather is a famous baseball player. But, you know, here you cannot show, you cannot show off to anyone because, you know, nobody cares about baseball here. If our grandfather was maybe Ronaldo, then he would show off. Look here. Melea watoto vizuri. When he decided he was ready to get married, he came home and told us about the route he was going. Well, it's a challenge, but it was all in the service of building something important. Eligible women walk through the village, and he makes his choice now not one who believes in arranged marriages. You know, I was shocked on love on multiple levels. Baba mzuri sana. Na tutaendelea kuishi naye. But having selected a couple of my husbands myself, 
I was like, it's fine. How many have you had? Let's not discuss how many I've had. More, more than one. Wow. Possibly more than two. Who knows? <laughs> Why did you marry him? Nime kuba nime mpenda. Translate that for us. <laughs> she said she loved him. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> When my brother went to Africa, he left during a time when we had had a lot of losses in our family. Our brother died in a car accident um, when he was 24. In 72, Jack died prematurely of his diabetes complications. In 73, my mother died. It was a devastating time for all of us. David decided that he needed to look to Africa for relief. We'd lost my brother, we'd lost my father, and then we felt like we sort of lost Dave in a way, too. I said goodbye to him and uh, cried, but not in his presence. We were supportive but devastated all at the same time. If Jack and I were sitting around discussing David and David's commitment to Africa, his life in Africa, and all the things he's doing, Jack would be quite skeptical and not fully supportive. Jack wanted all of us to be um, fully developed Americans and to, to deal with this society because that's all he knew. He never went to Africa. So it would have been hard for him to totally appreciate what David's doing except that he would be proud of him in that what he's doing, he's doing very well. People ask me, why did I leave America? Africa's wealthy, Africa's beauty, Africa's full of potential. Africa is a place where you can make a life, raise children, be satisfied, and contribute. Within days, I leave for a trip to the US. Tremendously looking forward to seeing my mother, who's now 92 years old, and my sister. So seeing family will be part of the joy of this trip. Dave's coming back home to New York, and we are thrilled because he'll be here for the 42nd anniversary of the Jack Robinson Foundation, and our family will be reunited. When David went to Africa, he went there in search of himself. Initially, it was a loss for me. Make room for your grandmother. I did grandma here. But now it's become um, an extension of my life and an extension of my self to be able to be a part of his life in Africa. I sort of describe my family as soldiers. No matter what happens in our lives, we've learned to soldier on. And so it did not surprise me at all that David would not just go to Africa and live. He would go to Africa and try to make a difference. You can put me down as being an expert on a, being a colored American with 30 years of experience at it. I know that life in these United States can be mighty tough for people who are a little different from the majority. I hope African Americans can feel the strength of their broad identity. I hope we can understand who we are in a global sense. Because it's only from that strength will we be able to resist and develop. I'm good where I am. <laughs>